Hey, what is up everybody? In today's video, I'm going to be going through a bunch of original Xbox and Xbox 360 games that I recently acquired uh, through both Facebook Marketplace and my local thrift store. So last week, I met up with a couple of buyers, uh, the first of which sold me this. Tony Hawk's Project 8. Now I'll be honest, I've never played a Tony Hawk game before. Um, I never, I, I was aware of Tony Hawk growing up, but I just, I just never, but I never got into it. And the thing is, by the time, by the time I was getting into video games, the franchise was, was already on its decline. Uh, we of course had the golden period between 1999 and up until like the end of the sixth generation of consoles, you know, the end of the PS2 era. But then with the seventh generation, that's when things kind of went downhill a bit, culminating in culminating in the release of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, which was a really bad game from what I heard. It was basically just made at the last possible minute because they realized that the license was running out, so they cobbled together a product that was completely unacceptable to be, uh, to be sold. So uh, this game was made in... Ooh, yeah, this was a 2006 game. This came out, at, I believe, at the launch of the Xbox... No, not Xbox 360. Uh, PlayStation 3 and Wii. I don't... The, see, the thing is, this franchise has been available on so many platforms, that it's hard to keep track of uh, which console the games came out on. Because you got the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, original Xbox, Xbox 360, the GameCube, the Wii, the PS2, the PS3, and... Uh, PC, even it, it just it's and even the Game Boy Advance uh, and DS, which I almost completely I completely forgot about. So yeah, this franchise um, it's got a lot of entries and a good chunk of them are good. It's just that a lot of these games have been lost to time because um, expiring licenses. So uh, this game in spe specifically, as well as a lot of the other Tony Hawk games. Um, They've been de they've been long delisted because because of uh, expiring licenses, especially in regards to the mu the music. Um, in fact, the recent uh, Tony Hawk remasters omitted some songs because of obvious license licensing issues. Uh, but regardless, I hope I can actually finally get to experience some of the uh, some why. I can finally understand why some people really like this franchise so much. I mean, hopefully, and hopefully we get some more entries, you know. Um, it's always it's always a good thing when you see a franchise get revitalized and it ends up going well, uh, especially in the case of Activision, because, my word, they've abandoned so many franchises over the years for various reasons. It's, it's It'd be nice to have something that isn't just Call of Duty all the time, you know. But yeah, I got this for five bucks. Obviously, it does not come in its original case, but uh, I mean, you can't go wrong for five bucks. Uh, next up, I'm going to show off two games here, which I got from... These ones I got last, late in the day, um, at my local thrift store. Uh, it says $5.99 here, but I had a 20% off coupon, so instead of paying 12 bucks, I got it for 10 uh, so the first one is, again, much like Tony Hawk, a franchise that has kind of went downhill for a while, uh, Need for Speed Pro Street. Um, and much like Tony Hawk, this one, of course, also has has been delisted because of licensing issues. Um, you know, cars, of course, uh, um, very hard to get um, relicensed, I suppose. That and the music. So, yeah, this game was released back in, I think, 2000, yeah, 2007, published by EA. Um, yeah, I, I've i heard that uh, that the French franchise, uh, much like Tony Hawk, went downhill. Although, in the case of um, Need for Speed, it kind of went downhill with, um, starting with, like, the eighth generation of games. They tried to re They tried rebooting the franchise. Uh, which to to varying degrees of success, um, but for the most, but it's I mean it's still relevant. It's just 
the games are not as uh, revered as they once were necessarily. A lot of people, from what I heard, say that the underground games from the mid two thousands were really good. Um, uh, 2000s, 2012's Most Wanted, I heard, was also really good, uh, and as well as Hot Pursuit, the reboot that is. Yeah, this franchise has gone gone on its own fair at least two reboots. Um, the Most Wanted reboot in 2012, and the and the 20 I think 2015 reboot, I believe. Uh, I can't remember exactly but yeah here's need for speed pro street and much like tony hawk it got a release on a wide variety of platforms uh there's a good chunk of comparison videos online that you can look up uh, uh detailing all the differences it really is difficult to um to play some of these games because you don't know which version is like the best version to play necessarily uh, you could, I mean, yeah, sure, the Xbox 360 is, like, the best visually and from a graphical, well, from a visual and technical standpoint, but um, there's also, like, you never know uh, if that Wii version is actually pretty decent or the DS version is somehow superior. But uh, nonetheless, I have it, I've got this game now, and uh, hopefully it's good. I actually tried to get the DLC for this. But unfortunately, it's no you can no longer get it, sadly. And uh, I'd recommend anybody out there get whatever free DLC you can from the Xbox 360 store and or any other any other free items you can get from the, that store before it closes in July, uh, because you're never going to be able to get it again unless you, of course, mod your system. But if you don't want if you know you don't want to mod your system, then yeah, that's you're you're out of luck. Uh, next one is interesting because it's a double pack. Uh, now, these double packs have existed since the original Xbox era, and um, they've all, they're always interesting to, to find because the way they package them is so unusual. Like, you have LEGO Indiana Jones, the original adventure, on one side with the box art covered in, like, all this, on, on with details that would otherwise be on the back. And on the back itself, you have a copy of Kung Fu Panda, now, I heard this game's not too bad, all things, all things considered. I did try out the DS version a little bit a long time ago, and I th actually, th actually thought it was alright. So maybe this this game's uh, not too bad. It's a pity it's not backwards compatible, though. It, that would have been really nice, but obviously, you know how it is with t movie tie-in games. They're always, um, they always have a limited sh shelf life. Um, so as the inside itself, well, you got a manual for Lego Indiana Jones and Lego Kung Fu, and sorry, not like <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. But you also have advertisement for Star Wars: The Force Unleashed as well, which is neat. Yeah, and you can see here you got disc one and disc two. It would have been neat if they actually included it all in one disc, but obviously um, they didn't. They just all they did they, that probably would have meant more work, and plus. This package itself is all, is already strange. I mean, Lucas Arts. You have a Lucas Arts game and a Activision game. When Activision, of course, were publishing all these licensed games, so yeah, I can see why they wouldn't want to put it on one disc. So that's all the that's all the um, box box games. Now I have here all the loose copies of games that I got from a seller on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, this seller uh, sold them to me for about 30 bucks, and I got quite a number of games. Like, yeah, so here, it, yeah, so here we, here it is. We've got. Uh, let's start off with this one. So for 30 bucks, I got a total of eight discs. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through every single one here briefly. So this one is a. Is the Sega GT 2002 and Jet Set Radio Future double double pack? So this was originally bundled with a bunch of Xbox systems. Uh, so it has two games on the disc, which is uh, which is pretty neat. Um, now I, I now I couldn't care for Sega GT honestly. It's you know it's a racing game, um, and you know us. You know, aside from the aforementioned Need for Speed, I just, you know, I, I have no reason to care for this all that much. But Jet Set Radio Future, and this one's interesting because this is a game that a lot of people want to get 
want to see re-released, but unfortunately has not. And most and this is and the most likely cause is the is the is the soundtrack, which uh, li relies heavily on on uh, what they call sampling. It's basically when they layer a bunch of um, sound bites together to create a song. Uh, the per the person who did the soundtrack for Jet Set Radio Future also. Yeah, I think it was the same. Yeah, the same guy who also did the soundtrack for Sonic Rush, which is, which explains a lot of the similarities, in the in how the music is composed. But yeah, a lot of people would love to see Jet Set Radio Future make a comeback. Hopefully, it will. Um, but that really depends on whether or not they can get they can actually get the music uh, rights holder to be get on board. Because unfortunately, this was one game that was not made backwards compatible due to. Um, due to well, licensing issues. Uh, next up, we have a, another movie tie-in game, uh, Spider-Man, the official movie merchandise. Yeah, so this yeah this is uh, based off of the 2002 Sam Raimi movie. Um, uh, this is obviously a much different time for Spider-Man because he actually got a release on anything. Uh, he actually got released on a system that wasn't PlayStation, which is pretty neat. Now the game itself, I think it's. It, I heard it's not that, not, not the greatest. But uh, the thing that really sells it for for a lot of people is the fact that uh, Tobey Maguire, as well as some of the other actors from the movies, they actually come back and voice the characters in the game. Uh, not necessarily the greatest voice acting. For if you know, if I'm gonna, you know. Presumably, because of course, um, this was a much different time where, where just because where they would they, would, they kind of phone it in, I guess. Um, but whatever, it's it's still it's still pretty neat that they actually got the actors from the movie to do it. It's it's it's, uh, it's so interesting because um, now of course we they got um, they got Yuri Lowenthal voicing Spider Man. And I heard he's a really great actor. But yeah, Spider-Man. I'm definitely going to try and get Spider-Man 2 for sure, because that is considered one of the best um, Spider-Man games ever. Oh, sorry. I'm, I, when I said, and also when I said that the voice acting wasn't the greatest, I really mean like by video game standards. Like the characters don't talk like they're in a video game. Which is a bit different than how actors in real life talk in movies. But anyways, um, moving on, we have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Four, another Tony Hawk game. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the Platinum Hits edition for the original Xbox. Um, yeah, not much to say that I haven't already said with that I haven't already said with Project Eight. Um, but I will say, from, from what I do. From what I heard, rumor has it that they were planning on remaking this game alongside the third game, but that remaster was cancer was cancelled for whatever reason. Uh, hopefully, now that Microsoft owns these guys, they'll actually go back and re remake it or remaster it, I should say. But yeah, this is like one of the best, one of the best from what I heard. It's also oh yeah, it's also worth mentioning that the games I'm showing off. Um, some, yeah, so the Xbox games I'm showing off here, the original Xbox games, they're all backwards compatible on an Xbox 360 at the very least. They're not backwards compatible, um, most of them are not backwards compatible with an Xbox One, sadly. Although, the, the one I'm about to show is. So, I have here, uh, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, uh, another movie tie-in game. Uh, my biggest motivator for getting this is the fact that it is backwards compatible on an Xbox One and Series X, so that's really neat. Um, uh, of course, it, it is based on Episode Three, which, in my opinion, at least unless I, at least for now, anyways, I think that's the best of the uh, prequel trilogy movies. Um, and I, I don't know who, I don't know if they actually got the actors um, to actually voice the characters here, but. But it, um, but obviously, but this was obviously in that era where every, every uh, movie had to have a tie-in game, regardless of quality. And uh, from what I heard, this was 
okay, I guess. It's still a bit odd that they actually made this backwards compatible on an Xbox One. But uh, I guess it's because Disney owns the rights to it. I mean, I was under the impression that EA had the rights, but I guess Disney has the rights to all the previous games. So that's and they were like, and they were like, you know what? Let's let's just have it backwards compatible for what for whatever reason. Uh, okay, so the next game is interesting. So I already have Quake Four, but the reason I got this was. Um, I assume the guy. I assume the seller must have thought that I wanted Quake Four, and he gave and he said that he gave uh, the bonus disc as an extra. But I actually wanted the bonus disc because, um, you see, when this when Quake Four first came out, it came with a bonus disc uh, that had Quake Two on it, a remastered version of Quake Two on it. Now I heard the remaster is not the greatest, but hey, it's Quake Two on a disc on an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty disc. So I had to have it. And um, uh, the funny thing about this game is that it was developed. So it was published by Idsoft. Oh, sorry, no, published by Activision and developed by Raven Software. Uh, who, and of course, Id Software and for a while, Id Software and Raven Software, they were... Uh, they were owned by like two different companies. So ZeniMax owned id Software and then Activision owned Raven Software. And uh, it's interesting because because now they're both because now all the companies you see here are owned by Microsoft, which is quite fascinating. But yeah, Quake Four. I uh, don't know much about it, but um, I already have a copy of it. It's just that I didn't have the bonus disc before. Um, for some reason, yeah. See, I don't know what happened, but they they just sold the uh, they just sold Quake Four without the bonus disc. I assume I I had assumed that Quake Two was included on the disc. I could never test it because Quake Four was one of the few games that wasn't backwards compatible and still isn't, sadly, on an Xbox One. I may be holding out hope that maybe they will make it backwards compatible, but uh, the chances of that are very slim. Like they have no reason to make it backwards backwards compatible now. They could just remaster the game. And then re-release it, uh, which is exactly what they did with Quake Two, um, Quake One and Quake Two, I should say, and I think Quake Three recently as well. They, uh, the only thing we need now is Quake Four, and I think a, uh, some other side game. Okay, well, next up we have uh, the we have Far Cry, Pre Far Cry Instincts Predator. Now this is a bit of an oddball because. Um, this is actually this is actually a two in one. This is actually a compilation of two games. Um, I forgot the name. I actually forgot the name of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think one of them is Instincts, and then one of them is like Evolution. And uh, what happened was, they the original Far Cry, the very first one, was remade for the Xbox. This was a very different time in gaming um, when Xbox when Xbox when console versions were very different from PC versions of games because, uh, from my understanding. I think it was uh, the PC that were more powerful than the consoles, which have traditionally been true. It's just that because of the difference in power, they always made the games different. So what happened was they, they released it on PC, remade it for the Xbox, made a sequel called Evolution, and then, but, but the same day the sequel came out, they released it on the Xbox 360 with the first game on the disc. Which is a bit weird. Like, that's that's the same as if uh, we released I don't know, like the newest Call of Duty game. Um, yeah, that's if that's if we made the new they made the uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare three. Um, yeah, if they if they release Call of Duty Modern Warfare three right now, but next gen versions of the game include Modern Warfare two on the disc. That's that's basically what that's kind of like what happened here. Oh, oh, but wait, wait, wait. Actually, no, 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 scratch that. It's basically what if they they made... Yeah, what if they remade... Actually, you know what? No, you know what? Yeah, I was right, I was right. It's basically what if they made Modern Warfare, the newest Modern Warfare 3 reboot, uh, but also gave you, uh, gave you uh, Modern Warfare 2 for free on next generation systems. It's a bit weird like that. 
But yeah, uh, this would not be the first comp the last compilation that uh, Ubisoft would make. They also made the Far Cry compilation, um, which included Far Cry Two, Three, and Blood Dragon, which I actually have in my collection. Uh, if you own the PS3 copy, everything is like on one disc. If you own the 360 version of Far Cry compilation, Far Cry Blood Dragon is on its own disc. Uh, speaking of Blood Dragon, it actually got re-released recently, not too long ago, on uh, on modern hardware. So you don't have to play through back and pat mode. It's actually um, running natively on the hardware now. Uh, the last game. Unfortunately, this one does not work. He ba I basically got a dud here. Uh, apparently, the seller did claim that he didn't have a console to test these on, but whatever. I, I didn't lose too much money on this. So I, did, I, I was actually pretty hesitant to get this, but I, you know what? I decided to get it because, hey, it was a movie tie-in game, and these things are hard to come by as the years go on because of they have such a short uh, shelf life. So it's the TMNT uh, movie tie-in game from 2007. I don't think I watched that movie. It's only now that I realize that they've actually made quite a number of these movies. Like, we have the, the the movie from the 90s. We had the 2007 movie, which I was kind of oblivious to. We also had the uh, Michael Bay-directed movies. And then now we have, like, the animated movies. I'm sure I'm missing some some movies. But, yeah, this game, sadly, does not work. I even tried the uh, I even tried the, the toothpick tr trick, which, unfortunately, did not uh, work out. So, yeah, I now have a disc that's just sitting in my collection that's not working so yeah that's basically all the games i got here um that i got recently i paid so i got eight discs for 30 bucks containing nine games one of which doesn't even work so yeah i got eight discs plus these plus these four packed onto three discs so that's i got a total of 12 discs 12 discs, so for, for a total of about 45 bucks, that's basically less than $4 per game, which is a phenomenal deal when you think about it. It's a shame I don't have the cases for most of them, but that's something that I'm willing to live with. But yeah, that, does, that pretty much does it for um, this video, guys. Um, if you like what you saw, you know, as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will uh, see you next time.